Once again, we will start with an opening statement from Coach, then we'll take questions for the students, and then we'll come back to Coach for questions with him. Coach, if you want to start off with an opening comment about the win tonight, congratulations. Uh, first off, you know, hats off to Ohio State. Uh, they're like, they're a little banged up in terms of um, who they have available, um, who's playing, different guys are in and out. Um, and, you know, they've, they've gotten a little bit of a rut because of that, but um, they're still a really good team. EJ Liddell's a really good player, one of the best players in the country. And Malachi Brim is, is tough. Like, not like tough for a freshman, he's tough for a player. And, um, you know, I, I thought they, those two guys caused so many problems. Um, but I, I'm proud of these guys. Uh, I'm proud of the guys in our locker room. I'm so happy for them uh, because we get to play again tomorrow. And, you know, we've been through a lot this year. We've had a lot of close losses. And now we're, you know, doing what we need to do to, to flip those losses to wins. And uh, all those close losses just made us battle tested. And I think we're, we're starting to find the right rhythm right now at the, at the right time. All right, we'll start with questions for the students. We'll go in the middle on the right-hand side. State your name and affiliation, please. John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Miles, with about seven minutes left, you poked the ball away from EJ Liddell and then got out on, on uh, Branham and defended him and hit the transition three. How big are those sort of moments to get the energy up in a game like this? I mean, the steal and the stop more than the three. I mean, you know, we had a huge focus on defending without fouling and um, just playing aggressive and being more physical in the second half. Um, the three, I mean, I just kind of did what I've done a thousand times and, you know, I worked really hard on that shot and made it. Um, but I think the spark really came from the defensive end, for sure. We'll go in the back row on the left. Austin Groffcom Radio. Sam, last year this game kind of reminded me of the game against Wisconsin. You guys came all the way back to lost by one, came up short. This year you guys come all the way back again and get the job done. How does it feel to win this game and beat Ohio State after losing to them the first two times this season? Um, it feels great. You know, I said it yesterday. Uh, my most important goal is the one with this group of with this group of guys. And I want to get one opportunity. You know, um, we made it to the second day last year, uh, lost on a last second decision made by me. You know, um, so I'm just happy to make it to Friday, one with this group of guys. You know, because we really deserve it. Coaching staff put in a lot of time and effort, making sure we know everything, and um, we just try to execute. You know, so I'm just happy for everybody on the team. We'll go in the front row with Adam. Adam Jardy, Columbus Dispatch. For both of you guys, uh, the second half, you scored 47 points. I think you had baskets on 22 with 30 possessions. What were you able to do putting Ohio State in some of those ball screen situations that enabled you to be so much more effective than in the first half? Miles, you start, and then Sam? Uh, I mean, you know, we worked on our spacing a lot. All season, we worked on being in the ball screen and having the right spacing and, you know, creating separation. And, playing on opposite planes and all kinds of different things. And, you know, it, it was really beautiful to see it come into fruition in the second half today. Um, honestly, it was, you know, uh, our, like I said, our staff does a great job putting together clips, how to attack. And um, we have a guy in our staff, uh, Coach Trey. He, all he does is put together clips for um, all the players, you know, and um, he tells us before the game how to attack, you know, so I kind of knew we were going to have to get off two separate planes. Coach Shoes does a great job. Um, we do ball screen stuff every day, like making reads, because me and Pickett has the ball in our hands a lot, you know. But uh, honestly, just watching film with Coach Trey and um, listening to him, and just it just comes down to applying it in the game and making the right decision. And that's what we did. Go back over there. And then we're going to take some questions on Zoom. Sam, yesterday it was Jalen, today it was you sort of carrying the load. You mentioned how much you guys have the ball in your hands. How difficult is it in games like this where it really grinds you down to, to keep that sort of energy up late then? Um, it's not hard at all. Um, it's kind of like me and Pick just alternate. You know, um, if he has it going, uh, I don't even want the ball. I'd rather just give it to him. And it was the same thing today. Um, me and him talks. At times, he felt like he had the mismatch in the, uh, the post. And I came to him during my timeout, and, I'm, and I was just telling him, like, like, hey, bro, I know I could get to the 
to the spot, uh, get in the hole, make my layups, and he just said, all right, we'll do you and just make the right decision. You know, so it's not that hard. Because even at times where it feels like we're carrying a load, the surrounding guys that's out there on the floor does so much for us, it makes it a lot easier. All right, we'll go on Zoom or take a question from Andrew Clay. Andrew, your line is open. Hey, guys, Andrew Clay, WTAJ, back in Altoona. Uh, you guys have struggled so much this year on the road. Now you guys have won two games away from the BJC. Does it feel any different now than perhaps maybe what the regular season road games are feeling like? Sam, you take that? Um, yeah, it feels, it feels a little different. Um, it's just you miss a shot, it's like, dang, because this is the last game, you know. So I really feel like that's the only difference. And, um, just us coming together out there. You know, these last two games we uh, we were trailing, you know, but it's like we're fighting back. And in a way, it's similar to on the road because we don't – it's just us out there. Just like when we go play Minnesota on the road, Northwest on the road, we don't have any fans in the house, you know. So in ways it's different and in other ways it's very similar. We'll take a question from David on Zoom. Question for both you guys. Uh, can you just talk about the momentum you guys built last night from the comfort behind win against Minnesota, and you picked it up tonight against Ohio State. What, what was the biggest difference in both games? Miles, you take that? Um, the way we just, I mean, Coach tells us all the time, you know, the way we fight, you know, the effort we bring every night. Like, we don't want to go home. That's the main thing. And today, I mean, playing in the Big Ten tournament is win or go home. And you have to have that chip on your shoulder to just go out and fight as hard as you can for as long as you can. It's 40 minutes of basketball. You got to be prepared to play all 40 minutes as hard as you can. I'll take one last question for the students from Daniel Gallen on Zoom. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, what do you kind of take away from that Purdue game back in January? It was obviously a close one, and you'll get another shot at them now. What do you, I know it's pretty soon after this game, but what do you kind of remember from that game? and? kind of moving forward, how are you guys going into it? Sam, go ahead. Um, the main thing is it was a close game. You know, it came down to the last few possessions. So um, it, it's a bright spot, you know, uh, even though we lost, you know, um, if one or two possessions goes our way, you know, we can win. And um, that's all I'm really looking forward to. And I know we all we did was really run our offense. You know, we got what we want. We did what the coaches made us practice and we executed, you know. So the first time we played and we lost by a possession or two, I'm not sure, but we were capable of winning that game, you know, so um, I'm looking, it's positive, my opinion. All right, you guys can head back to the locker room. We'll take questions for Coach Shrewsbury. We'll start in the middle. Micah, for the, the second night in a row, you guys shot 60% or better in the second half. What has changed at halftime uh, in this game compared to last game? I, I think we just, we kind of get a better feel as we go on, as the game goes on. Um, like there were a couple adjustments that we talked about, but not much, right? Like I talked more about our defense than I did our offense. Like these guys are the ones playing. Um, so they have the freedom to kind of talk about what they see, how we can attack better. Um, I didn't think our physicality was very good offensively in the first half. Right. I talked about EJ Liddell and Joey Brunk won the ball in the post. They caught it with one or two feet in the paint. Right. First play of the game, Pickett tries to post and gets pushed all the way out to the three point line. Right. There's the difference right there. Uh, in the second half, now he's he's backing guys down. He's two feet in the paint. They have to decide if they want to help or not. But our physicality changed, and then our offense changes. And um, I talked about this guy yesterday, um, the guy I used to work for, Brad. He always says the toughest team set the rules. And uh, I felt like we were the tougher team in the second half. We'll go to the back left corner. Coach, uh, Miles Stratt had a great all-around game, both offensively and defensively, and he was bringing a lot of energy for the comeback. What did you see from him tonight? I think just taking on the challenge of guarding E.J. Liddell. Um, Pickett picked up a couple fouls. Seth picked up three fouls. They played a long time with that, but we kind of switched up our matchups in terms of what we wanted to do. And um, like he's a hard cover, man. He can he can score in the post. He can step out and drive. He can make threes. 
Um, so you have to have some guys with some versatility who can guard him. And uh, I saw Miles just did a pretty good job of being physical, trying to push his catches out further, um, trying to deny as much as possible, and then make it as tough as possible. Um, he still scored a boatload of points. We fouled him way too much, got him to the free throw line. Um, you know, where he was getting and ones or, or got him into the bonus at like the 10 minute mark. We need to do a better job of that. And that was one of our keys going in is uh, not sitting on the free throw line as much. But I thought his will defensively really kind of spurred us on offensively. And um, one of the things that we knew is is EJ helps a lot, right? He's a great, he's a great shot blocker, but sometimes he, he veers too far off his man. And uh, Miles got a big three because he was in the paint like that. And then the next time they helped, he made the extra pass to uh, Seth for a three. And those were huge plays for us to keep our offense going. All right, we'll go there in the middle. Micah, with about a minute 30 left, John pulled down that rebound with, I think, four or five Ohio State defenders around him. How far did that go in sort of closing out the game? You know, he makes plays like that every single game for us. And that's who he is. And um, unbelievable will for a guy to like play like how he plays, get ready to play all day today, and then come out and play, you know, 31 minutes, almost 31 and a half minutes, as hard as he plays on both ends. And they're going at him in the post with Joey Brunk. And he's, you know, fighting down there. Then he's sprinting to the other end of the court. Now he's sprinting back up and setting ball screens and rolling to the rim as hard as possible, going for the offensive rebound and then sprinting back on defense. And then late in the game, they, they go small. And now he's got to guard E.J. Liddell. And just his communication, um, he denied him one time and tried to push him further out on the court. Like, you can't talk. You can't say enough things about that kid. There, there's a lot of things that you can say, how, how great of a player he is, how great of a person he is, but unbelievable will and fight. Uh, he's one of the toughest dudes I've ever been around. We'll go in the front row, and then we'll take a few questions on Zoom, and we'll wrap up. Adam Gardy of the Columbus Dispatch. This was your most efficient offensive game of the season against a Big Ten team, and you only had 24 points at halftime. When the second half is going the way that it went for you tonight, what does that feel like? We've had games where we've really struggled, uh, but these guys just kind of found different ways to get to their strengths. And we were just trying to play through our strengths. We felt like um, Pickett had an advantage posting guys. Um, so we tried to go to that. We thought um, trying to attack and pick and rolls a little bit, trying to get them into switches and now bringing another guy in, making them decide, do they want to switch it? Do they not want to switch it? Right? So um, we do a lot of different things. That's one thing that that's probably like, if you watch us play, I don't, there's a couple things we do each game, but you're probably looking at it like, man, they do one thing like one time, and then they'll do something one time, and then they'll do something else one time. It's hard to prepare for everything um, when there's so much randomness to how we play. Um, so our guys just found, like Sam was saying, the advantage that they liked, that they wanted, and we just tried to attack it in that way. We'll go to Mark Brennan on Zoom. Mark, your line is open now. Micah, along those lines, uh, you guys had a 32-14 edge, points in the paint. To have your guards be able to do so much of that damage, how much of a luxury is that? Uh, kind of in this day and age, you, you, the two guards had two three-pointers between them but ended up with 34 points. Thanks. Yeah, that's uh, just a byproduct of those guys. They do a great job of knowing what we want to do, how we want to attack, and then finding different ways um, based on how people play pick and roll defense. And you know we see something and we can execute it and we can do it. They did a good job of getting into the paint, kind of keeping the guard on their back. And now John's rolling and you make that big, make a really tough decision 
whether he stays and stops them or whether he goes back to take John and that gets him into the paint. Like we talk about paint touches all the time. It's one of the stats that we talk about at halftime that we put on the board. Like how many paint touches did we have in the possession? How many did the other team have? And for the most part, if you continue to get in the paint, get in the paint, get in the paint, we were scoring at the rim, which now forced them to help a couple times late, which got us those open threes. All right, we'll take one last question from David Eckert on Zoom. Go ahead, David. Hey, Micah. Um, you talked in your opening statement about um, the, the close losses this season being, you know, learning experiences. How have you made sure that your guys have interpreted them that way rather than reasons to be discouraged? Because that seems like it's something that can kind of go either way. Yeah, it can. Um, we got an older group of guys um, that have kind of been through the, the wars a little bit. Now, they haven't done it together. They haven't all done it here. Uh, but they've brought each of their own separate experiences, and that's what we kind of lean on it as much as possible. And we go back and we watch film, and we try and learn the best way we can. Uh, but you know, you, you just you ask these guys to just do their best, right? We can't do more than our best. And we've given our best on a lot of occasions, right? So you can be okay with the results of what happens. Um, I've talked about this before, right? We didn't give our best against Nebraska at home. So that loss really hurts, really hurts. So we didn't give our best. Uh, but we've given our best more times than not. And when you lose, you know how much you gave. And, and that, um, that's kind of what being good's about. You, you got to be vulnerable a little bit to be good. Like it takes these guys, there's a lot of vulnerability for these guys to go out there every single night and just put themselves out there in front of people, trying as hard as possible, knowing that you can still lose. Right? It's easy to just quit and be like, I don't want to put myself all the way out there and do everything I can because now I have a built-in excuse, right? We get beat, yeah, I know, but I wasn't really trying. These guys are putting themselves out there and trying as hard as possible and still getting beat. Um, and it, it, that's some vulnerability to it, but that makes you good at the end of the day. Uh, that makes you better at the end of the day. And you know they're open to criticism. They're open to change. Um, and we're just learning day by day. And um, I'm just so proud of them. For, for fighting through every single time we get down and it's just building character. It's going to, it's, you know, basketball is teaching life lessons and uh, these guys are learning life lessons right now because life's not, you know, life's not always fair. There's going to be obstacles that happen and you know, we're playing a kid's game, but we're learning life lessons through it. All right. Great. Thank you very much. We'll Thank see you, you tomorrow. Thank you to the media for attending tonight and we will see you tomorrow.